Hi, I'm Patrick Tuttle, the real estate guy with Coldwell Banker Heritage and Legacy Management Services with your real estate market update for El Paso, Texas, June 2024. And I'll be right back with that report. All right, so I'm back. It's July the 10th, 2024, and we've got our market update for today. So let's look at our resale homes as we go on here. Now, what you're gonna see is that we've got a slight widening of the gap between the available homes and the sales. They were pretty much flat for the month of June. We didn't have much of an increase or decrease month over month but when we look at the year over year statistics here's what happened so we had sales were down two percent so that's not much it appears as though we've recovered from our COVID lockdown days when we had that big boom and now we're back to what I'm going to call a normalized market here in El, pa in El Paso so sales were down only two percent year over year from 541 homes, resale homes sold down to 530. Months of inventory, that's the big kicker right there. We're up 60% year over year. We've got uh, 2.96 months of inventory. And depending on what price range your home is in, if you're on the market right now, it may be as much as nine months of inventory. 79911 zip code, which is out on the north end of the northwest end of El Paso in the 400 to 450 price range there is literally nine months of inventory in that price range right now but in other places and as the prices drop we get down to one month and even days on market where we're just selling stuff with still multiple offers so it really depends on what kind of a price range you're in as to whether that months of inventory is affecting you positively or negatively now the average price is up 1.2%, 281,936 to 285,000. Again, that's pretty much flat year over year. It's not even tracking with the inflation numbers right now, which by the way, the Fed uh, Chair Jerome Powell said yesterday, his biggest concern is the jobs report because we're seeing more unemployment, not so here in El Paso, but nationwide, they're seeing more unemployment as the market starts to shift out of the hyperinflation into a more reasonable inflation. Prices are just so high for a lot of things that uh, they're getting concerned about that and see what's gonna happen. Advertised home down 1.9% year over year, down to 1,889 square feet. Again, shrinkflation happening. Price per square foot up 3.2% at 149.56. And the days on market is at 60 overall compared to 51 of what we had last year. Overall, a good report here. It's pretty steady. This is kind of what we used to see uh, pre-2017, not COVID. 2017 is kind of when our market shifted for real. And uh, I can point to February of 2017 when that was the first time we saw multiple offers on most stuff. And I had 26 offers on one property over on the east side. And that's when I called it and I said, you know what, we are now in a seller's market. And it continued that way. COVID exasperated it, made it even worse. Today, it looks like we're getting back to normal. But again, it depends on what kind of price range you're in. Now on to our new homes report. Uh, new homes, the available homes dropped just slightly and the sales are still doing pretty good. Here's the report. Up almost 17% year over year. We sold 255 homes, brand new homes in the month of June, 2024. Months of inventory is down at 7.6%, down to 6.24. Remember, that's a number you just wanna cut in half because there's a lot that just got listed today and there's a house that's completely finished. We don't know where they all are and the data dive to get everything out of there would be just take way too much man hours to figure it out. So the easy number is to cut this in half. So we're somewhere around 3.5, 3.6 months of real inventory that's available for the builders and again, depending on what price range you're in, we're seeing some big bonuses, we're seeing big concessions. I saw a $400,000 house with a $27,000 concession to a buyer a couple of days ago. That's huge. They're trying to preserve those prices for the appraisals instead of drop the prices. And the buyers are saying like, you know, we're, we're not playing that game. I, we want the price low. We don't necessarily want the price high, but there's still not a huge amount of inventory out there when you look at it. About three, three and a half months is what they really have. Average price is down 
307,713. That's the first time we've seen a price decrease in new homes in over a year. Average size of the home is down 3.4%. Again, shrinkflation, I called that several months ago. Price per square foot is up to 16906 That's because the cost of materials, the cost of labor, those things are still going up. And because of the recent natural disasters that we've had. So we had that big fire up and around, three fires actually up around Rio de Oso, New Mexico. What's gonna happen is when they start to rebuild the supplies, the materials, the labor is gonna come from all around the region, not just here in El Paso, but it's gonna come from Pecos and Midland, Odessa and Carlsbad. It's gonna go from Lubbock. It's gonna come from Albuquerque and any of the towns surrounding Rio de Oso because as they start rebuilding, Rio de Oso doesn't have the manpower to rebuild that town and all of the structures that were lost over there. Then we had Hurricane Barrel that hit on Monday morning. It hit the coast of Texas, and there were a lot of homes that were destroyed there. We're going to feel the effects of that as well. That's probably going to be for years because of the insurance rates of what we're going to have to pay because we're in Texas, and the insurance company just says, we put a blanket across the state of Texas. If there was an event that happened that's gonna affect our insurance coverage, we're gonna to get to pay for it here in El Paso. So watch that as it comes on. Again, price per square foot, 169.06, and days on market, 147 compared to 144 last year. Not a huge change there. Again, that supply chain is pretty much unkinked, and they're able to build the houses and deliver them in time, on time, and that's indicative of what's going on there. Now, on to our interest rates. Uh, as of yesterday, Zillow was reporting 6.837% on 30-year uh, fixed rate, 15-year uh, at 6.03, and then we've got some arms down here, not a whole lot of savings in those. And the index returns, they're all positive except for, excuse me, the uh, three-month percentage. Dow Jones Industrial Average is a negative 1.73, 3.8 uh, 8, 2, and 3.55 on the S&P small cap. So comparatively, I still like real estate because it's tangible and it's something that I can touch and feel. And we're providing shelter to people, whereas these stocks are just building up people's portfolios. And that's fine if they want to do that. Remember, I'm not an investment advisor. I don't play one on TV. I can tell you about real estate. And for me, it's been a good investment over time, especially when we look at the fact that we've had about 140% return on that investment since 2004 to the 2024 mark, which I showed you last month. Three key with takeaways. Number one, it appears as though the market has normalized from the years where we had the COVID-19 boom. That was when we had the low interest rates. Everything was flying off the market as quickly as possible because we had cheap money that we could go out and spend. Well, the market is still sitting at about, we saw that just a second ago, 6.837 is the rate. And buyers are saying, you know what? It's not worth it for me to go buy a home if I don't need to. I'm not gonna buy an investment property if I don't need to. So it appears as though we've normalized and the moves that are happening are the ones that are from the, the life changes, the deaths, the divorces, the babies being born, the marriages, the job transfers and things like that. That's what drives our market here in El Paso. Number two, natural disasters like the recent fires up in Ruidoso and the hurricane barrel that hit the Texas coast earlier this week, those are gonna have an effect on us here in our market as we see rising cost of materials and rising cost of insurance. We may see more of what, we, what I call that shrinkflation where the price per square foot continued to rise, but the product itself, the house, got smaller because of the fact that we've kind of got a ceiling on where we are on buying for the most part. Once you get above $300,000 here in the El Paso area, you really shrink the number of buyers that can buy a home. So watch that in the future as it comes along. And then number three, overall, our market is doing well. Why? Well, mainly because we've got land that can be developed. We've got wide open spaces and it's relatively cheap to develop the land when it's flat and all they're taking off of it is sagebrush and creosote and cactus. That's pretty easy for the developers. Yes, it's costly, but it's easy. It's not as expensive as it is here in Northwest El Paso where they're chiseling out rocks to pour concrete slabs and things like that. So we've got jobs, 
We've got development going on and we are poised for growth and it's a great place to be. So overall, I think this is a great report. Yes, there's some aspects in there where I can sound a little bit negative, but don't take that as negative for the market. Overall, we're fantastic. If you're a buyer, you've got more inventory to choose from than you've had in the last four years. If you're a seller, you may not be getting the appreciation that you had a couple of years ago, but you're still benefiting because of the market going up. So overall, great report. If you've got questions about this or any of the services that we offer here at Coldwell Banker Heritage and Legacy Management Services, please reach out to me. You can reach me at 915-588-1850. That's my cell number, and I'll be happy Happy to visit with you about our services. If you're an agent and you'd like to see how this data affects you and your clients, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to coach you on some of those things and show you how data really makes a difference in interpreting the market. And of course, anybody else, if you just want to say hi, reach out. I'll be glad to talk to you. Thanks for watching. God bless you and make it a great day. Bye-bye.